Let's turn on the recording. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I, I gave a retreat, um, or I, I ta taught a retreat on um, finding refuge in Buddha Dharma and Sangha. Um, so finding refuge or taking refuge, going for refuge, actually going for refuge is the uh, more precise translation of the term. Um, actually, um, uh, is is a it's a key Buddhist teaching um, that we we go for refuge in in the Buddha, in the Dharma, and in the Sangha. And and I so I I thought about it a lot going up into the retreat. And uh, I know some of you were there, and so you. Uh, you heard these teachings. I'm going to give a, a share some, you know, much more condensed thoughts about it, but just taking a few of the thoughts and um, and uh, and sharing them with you. I'd like to begin by chanting out loud the um, the chant of going for refuge, and I'm going to chant it in the ancient language. Uh, which was spoken at the time of the Buddha. It's called Pali. Uh, some of you, of course, are familiar with these, this chant. Um, uh, and it, it, it simply means um, the, the beginning phrase, which I'll chant three times, um, is uh, an homage homage to the Buddha, homage to the awakened one, which is what Buddha means, um, the fully enlightened one. And, and then the next phrases are, uh, I go for refuge to the Buddha, I go for refuge to the Dharma, I go for refuge to the Sangha. Buddham saranam gachami, dhammam saranam gachami, Sangam Saranam Gachami. Uh, the the, uh, <laughs> the um, transcript uh, is really hilarious uh, how, how it's translating these Pali words. But um, uh, so I go, and then, and then it repeats it. So Dutiampi for the second time, and then repeating the same words and Tati Ampi for the third time. And it's, you know, I, I always feel that uh, it's because our minds are so unstable and scattered. So we repeat it three times because maybe at least once we'll be paying attention, <laughs> um, fully attention. And, and if we put the three together, maybe we've said it once with full attention. Um, so, uh, for me, it's uh, when I chant these, when I chant these uh, words, I feel a connection with my ancestors, my spiritual ancestors, our spiritual ancestors. I feel uh, that, uh, and it's not only ancestors of the past, but it's it's feeling a, a connection with the the whole sangha, the whole community of people who are. Uh, in whatever way they might define that, in whatever way they might understand that, um, on this path toward awakening. So it's it's a it's a very open and inclusive way of feeling in this moment of affirming that I'm going for refuge, and I'm going to open up that word refuge in a few minutes. But in in that act of going for refuge, I'm. I'm standing together with, uh, with all the community of people who are aligning ourselves with awakening. So please feel very welcome to chant with me. Uh, we won't open the mics to do it um, because it's uh, it just doesn't work on Zoom, as you I'm sure know. But please feel free to come chat with me and. And putting the hands together is a traditional way of, of just collecting the, the whole being, the yin and the yang, the heart, mind, body, uh, 
kind of collecting it together in an expression of unity. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa. Namo tasa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Udam Saranam Gacha Damam Saranam Gacha Sangam Saranam Gacha Dutiyam pi buddham saranam gacha. Dutiyam pi damam saranam gacha. Dutiyam pi sangam saranam gacha. Tatiyam pi buddham saranam gacha. Tatiyam pi damam saranam gachami. Tatiyam pi sangam saranam gachami. So, um, so just a few words about going for refuge in Buddha Dhamma Sangha. It was often uh, referred to as taking refuge, and um, uh, the literal translation is going for refuge. And I, I think it's interesting that it's an active, it's something active. It's something that that we're, it, it implies that we're actually moving. And in my understanding, the moving that we're doing in going for refuge is turning, there's a turning toward um, refuge. And so the word refuge implies that somehow we're not safe, that we're in, a, in some kind of situation, set of conditions where we need to find safety. And so the going for refuge implies that we, a certain degree of understanding, a, a certain moment of insight where we recognize that the way that we've been living, and it could be our initial movement toward the Dharma or the initial movement toward coming out of habits of, and patterns of addiction and, um, and harming ourselves and and others and running away from difficulty uh, in our lives in various unskillful ways. So there are so many ways that human beings do that and that we have done that, I've done that in my life. Um, so it could be that initial recognition turning toward 
something else, um, which may happen many, many times before we actually begin to make changes in our lives. Um, it could be that we've been practicing for many, many years. And, and there's a moment when we recognize in this moment, I'm caught. In this wrong moment, I've been acting unskillfully. I've been reactive. I've been expressing anger. I've been um, caught up in grasping. I've been avoiding uh, the difficult feelings by eating too much or going shopping or immersing myself in some kind of unskillful behavior. And so, so that going that going for refuge, that turning is something that can be an overarching thing and it also can be a moment. And that it is that, it is all of those. A recognition that you know, somehow we've gotten lost, we could become disconnected from our, our heart, from our deepest intentions. And um, and so uh, going for refuge, the first time we do it may be something that we're not really sure what we're doing. Like I remember the first time I heard that phrase, going for refuge. And um, I, it was from a Tibetan Lama that I had um, gone to as attending teachings with a group of people and he was talking about going for refuge. And I, it, it sounded very strange to me. I didn't really understand what he meant, but but I actually was going for refuge, but I didn't know it. I was very caught up in fear and um, I was in a, in a state of, I was in a kind of a post-traumatic state from things that had happened um, you know, in my life. And, um, and I, I was feeling kind of desperate actually. And, but, but if you had asked me at that moment, you know, are you suffering? I wouldn't have been able to say that I was because I, I didn't understand it. There's a certain insight that re is required to understand a certain connection to ourselves. It's required to understand that we're actually suffering. And that's why it's the first of the four ennobling truths the, that when we comprehend that we're suffering, then we're moving toward the path. So, so uh, yeah, so refuge, when we hear refuge, we might not really understand what that might mean, but it might, we just might know we're, we're needing to feel a sense of more safety, more space, more freedom. And, um, and then as we, as we develop in the path, as we practice you know, over months and years, we, that faith, that movement, which it is a movement of faith towards something that's greater than ourselves, that we feel will give us a sense of space, of openness. Um, it's, a, it's a faith that is grounded in, in experience. So it's not a blind faith. It's a faith that is grounded in something that we've known and experienced many times. That when we, that when we turn toward Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, we're really turning toward our own heart. We're really turning toward knowing our own experience. 
there's a, a Thai forest monk um, named Ajahn Suchito, who I really value his teachings. I consider him one of my heart teachers. And, um, and he, he makes a distinction, which I find interesting between uh, being in a sense of time, a sense of like linear time, past, future, past, present, future, um, but present in the sense of um, conditioned by the past and, and always looking toward the future. When we're in time, we're really never in the present because when we're really in the present, it's a time out of time. Um, but uh, so he makes that distinction between being caught in this linear time where we're always thinking about the past and future and, and that when we are in a space of faith, which is more like space. So he uses this kind of metaphor of, of time and space. So when we're, when we're in this time, we're in the mindset of gain and loss of getting somewhere, um, where we're caught up in what's changing and moving. Um, and when we're in space, we're in that openness which within which the changing and moving takes place within which it arises and passes away. When we're in this faith orientation, we are in a sense of being part of something bigger uh, than ourselves. And um, And so basically when we're taking refuge in, in Buddha, we're taking refuge in that awakened quality of mind, that space of knowing. Taking refuge in Buddha is kind of grounded in a connection, a sense of connection with the awakened human being, um, Gautama Buddha, um, who, so, so it's an affirmation that this, this was a human being who became free from the conditioning of his life and, uh, and, um, Oh, and awakened, um, actualized, realized a, uh, a quality of being which was not caught, could embrace it all. And so, so knowing that there was that human being and there are lineages of teachers who have woken up um, to varying degrees. There are different degrees of awakening, but there are, there are people and people who are alive today who, who are awake, who, are, uh, who have that capacity to, uh, to, to, to um, open to experience without reactivity, um, who, and there are different ways of understanding awakening, but, but um, you know, perhaps you've encountered people, uh, teachers that you, that you, there's just this, this quality of a uh, of presence of not being uh, contracted around a sense of ego or self, there's a very, 
great spaciousness to this being. And so, um, so that just that recognition that that there are that awakening is possible for each one of us. Um, and taking refuge in the Dharma is on one what's called the outer, the outer, the outer and inner. So I just described the outer and inner dimensions of Buddha, which is you know an awakened being and that capacity, that that quality of, of, of awakening that is part of each one of us, that is the essential part of who we are. And, and the Dharma is the teachings of the Buddha, those teachings to awakening. And, and in the inner meaning of, of Dharma is our, our experience as it's unfolding. So, so there's another Thai forest monk, Ajahn Sumedho, who said that practicing is the Buddha knowing the Dharma. The Buddha, the awakened part of our being, simply knowing what is unfolding in each moment without judging it, without preference, without reactivity, without being caught, just that openness of heart and openness of knowing. And so, the taking refuge in the Dharma or going for refuge in the Dharma is in any moment turning toward what is truly happening in our inner being, turning toward that. So the Buddha knowing the Dharma, the Buddha knowing the unfolding experience and knowing its nature, that it's impermanent, that it's, it can't be, can't be held on to. And when we try, it creates suffering for ourselves. And, and the knowing uh, that whatever is coming up in me, whether it's reactivity, or whether it's a sense of happiness, it's not, none of it is me or mine. It's not me or mine. It's, it's moving through, it's all, it's all experience moving through. And so that, that quality of knowing moment by moment, our inner, our inner life, our inner experience is how we take refuge. And, and then the third refuge, so important, is the sangha, uh, the, the practice community. And so in, in the outer mean, meaning, we could say that it is all of people who were practicing the Dharma were on the, the path. And on the inner meaning, we could say it's befriending, befriending what's coming up within us and also befriending what manifests from those who are around us, not excluding not turning, not closing our heart to anything, not turning anyone out of our compassion and, and actively finding ways to include all. So I just want to add, if this question arises in your mind, it doesn't mean that we ever put ourselves, that we, that that means that we need to put ourselves in harm's way or that we can't establish healthy boundaries for ourselves and our relationships. That's not 
it's, I'm not in any way saying that because of course we, we do need that. It's part of, that's part of respecting ourselves. But establishing healthy boundaries does not necessarily mean that we need to close our hearts to anyone. And that's a practice. That's a deep practice because sometimes it's hard. Sometimes people just are, uh, are really, it's really challenging to maintain an open heart. But it, when we find it really hard to keep our hearts open, at least it's important to know that. It's important to acknowledge that to ourselves and not just think, well, that's because that person is who they are. Big noisy truck is so when our hearts are closed, it doesn't mean we're supposed to know that. It means that we're aware of my heart is closed. My heart doesn't feel safe. And in that, in, in that moment, you know, we can perhaps remember beings who have, that we've known or that we've heard of, who have opened their hearts in, in very powerful and inspiring ways to those who are expressing very difficult to open his heart to somebody who was trying to kill him. And he didn't allow him to do that, but he, he taught him in that moment. He turned toward him and he gave him teaching fearlessly. So, so that, that can be uh, an inspiration to us when our hearts are closed to, to maybe aspire. So in our meditation, and I'm going to, um, let's move into our sitting practice now. In our meditation, we can perhaps think of it as going for refuge again and again, turning toward our experience, perhaps finding our grounding in our meditation object, the breath, the body, sound and and again and again inviting ourselves to wake up to be present to befriend ourselves to befriend what's unfolding so please um, find a, a way of of uh, comporting your body that feels supportive to you right now, um, whether it's sitting or standing or lying down or even walking. Feel the body supported by Mother Earth. Should have thought of closing the window before <laughs> I didn't think of it. So feel your body supported by the earth and feel the earthiness of your body that the, the weight 
the shape, the solidity of your body, relative solidity of your body, supported by the earth. I invite you uh, in whatever way feels best for you to connect with the body being present internally in the body feeling the body from the inside if that feels supportive You might, you might feel the breath in your nostrils. And you might uh, feel the breath as it moves through the body in the, in the windpipe, in the chest, in the abdomen. Inviting the body to be calm. And perhaps the breath can help the body release tension by just breathing in maybe one or two deep in breaths and releasing tension with the out breath. body is a, an expression of dharma that we can always turn to. One of the meanings of dharma is nature, it's how things are. And the body can can let us know how things are. When we attune to the body, when we listen to the body, the body can let us know if we're feeling ease or if we're feeling anxiety. You might touch in with the intention if you had named or uh, discovered an intention in the beginning of our session. You might touch in with that. Maybe it's changed.
inviting our attention to collect, to become collected around the breath or the body, or sound. Or perhaps just the touch sensation of the hands, the feet, any collecting of attention which brings you to be more fully present in this moment. During the sitting, which will be mostly uh, in silence for the duration, I invite you to explore this <clears throat> the sense of turning toward any experience that you may find yourself turning away from. It's a contraction or a, an emotion or an anxiety or discomfort. With a sense of actually that turning toward that experience is going for refuge. is bringing awareness to what is unfolding in this moment. To know its true nature, it's impermanent, it's unreliable and it's selfless nature.
Let's gather together the blessings of our practice, the blessings of our intention, our gathering, our open-heartedness to the presence of others, our mindful meditation, our listening to and applying the Dharma teachings, all of this is full of blessing and we can dedicate these blessings to the service of others. And also your patience, just seeing the chat, uh, all of the comments about the sound, which I hadn't heard, which I hadn't seen. So your patience and forgiveness for that as well. So may our practice in our lives serve the happiness, well-being and liberation of all beings everywhere. <laughs>